Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike, and today I'm gonna to talk about the seven main steps to take to start your own successful jewelry brand. Start a jewelry business, whether it is a side hustle or a full-blown business that can scale immensely. And this might sound like an abstract business to get into, but in the US alone, just in the United States in 2020, the jewelry industry was valued at over $76 billion, and that's billion with a B, so clearly, it's no small market. It's something that has a lot of room and a lot of versatility as well. Now, I personally know someone who makes over $200,000 per year. She lives in Chinatown, New York, and she sells her jewelry. Now, like I was saying, it's a versatile industry to get into. You can be as creative as you want if you're an artist selling very specific styles of jewelry, or you can be not creative at all. Someone like myself, I'm not that creative. You could easily get into this through retail or through doing something like investment grade jewelry, as we'll talk about later on in this video as well. You can also have a lot of versatility in how you actually deliver your products to customers. You can do wholesale, local, you can do shipping online, direct to consumer. You can start small, you can go big. Like I said, you really have a lot of options, which is why it's really such a great industry to get into if you're looking to either start a small side hustle, monetize an audience you have, or if you have a dream of having a large company, all of these can be done through a jewelry business, a jewelry brand. So in this video, we have seven steps to talk about. I'm gonna dive right into the first one. The first one is to decide on a business model. I mentioned there's a lot of versatility here, and that's true. With jewelry, you can sell to wholesalers, you can do direct to consumer sales, you can go Amazon FBA, you can sell it in many, many different ways, and all of these have their own benefits. And as you grow, you're probably gonna start off with one, but eventually you might branch out. Maybe you'll start off with just your own website. Maybe you start off with just Etsy, maybe you start off just with something like that, and eventually, maybe you move up and you have it listed on Amazon, maybe you eventually list it in some major box stores. If you have a really successful brand, you can start selling through Walmart or something like that. But essentially, direct to consumer is really going to be one of the best ways that we would recommend. So you cut out a lot of the middlemen and you can make the best profit and really learn a lot early on through the entire business rather than just kind of making it and hoping somebody else gives you a good price for that. But of course, if you're starting to make high volumes, Wholesale could be another great option. And FBA is a little bit more hands-off, but again, you're gonna lose a little bit of the margins there. Now, the next question you wanna ask is, what is your competitive advantage? Or, or what's your moat? If you think of your business as a castle with a moat around there, the moat is essentially uh, just a term used to describe what is keeping others away from getting to your castle? What's keeping other companies from making the same thing as you and stealing your, essentially just undercutting you and stealing your business? And so, you can kind of split this in two sides. The first side I wanna talk about is the non-creatives. Remember I said you can make a jewelry business if you're not creative, whether you're selling as retail or maybe you're selling like investment grade jewelry. And in these, the competitive advantage has to be a little bit more interesting. It has to be a little bit more about the style of what you're doing. So if you're just doing retail, maybe you have to retail something that nobody else really has done before. Maybe you're finding some like tribal things, maybe you're finding some different places around the world, in India, in Africa, whatever it might be, and bringing it to another part of the world and introducing a new style of jewelry. That might be your competitive advantage. But again, eventually people can catch up with that. So you wanna make sure that you're setting up something that's going to be very, very different and really hard for somebody else to reproduce because maybe it takes years to set up. Maybe it's really very unique and hard to do, something like that. Now, if you're doing investment grade jewelry, this one is going to be the most difficult because essentially what people want is as much value from the metals you're using, gold, platinum, silver, whatever it is, and they don't care as much about the design. Maybe they do, maybe they care about what the design looks like, but really investment grade means they wanna put their money somewhere that's going to retain value. So in this situation, maybe it's going to be more about your business model. Maybe you have faster shipping, maybe you have a really easy buyback program where people can buy it from, or they, can, they buy the stuff from you, and it's investment grade, so they wanna hold the value. So maybe you say, guaranteed, if it comes from us, we will buy it back at minus 10% or something, right? Something that is going to give them a lot of security and they can say, oh, I'm gonna buy from you because I know it's going to hold value. Now on the other side, if you are a creative, this is a little bit easier to make something that is a moat here, a little bit more of a competitive advantage, where again, you wanna have something that's different, but if you're creative, it's already kind of going to be inherent. You wanna make sure your designs are different, they're unique, and you really wanna have something that has a lot of meaning. Having a brand, especially something that's creative, is really going to help a lot if you have a story behind it. And that's why and that's why I wanted to recommend this book right here from Blake Mykoski. Now, of course, there's a lot of good books you can read for business, but Blake Mykoski started Tom's, The Shoes. And the book is titled Start Something That Matters because that was one of the biggest reasons that Tom was, was successful. He started a shoe company that had a story behind it. When he bought a pair of Toms, 
he would go and donate another pair of shoes to a country in need in South America. And this would give kids shoes that otherwise didn't have shoes. And in first world countries, it might be abstract to, to think about people not having shoes. And so that's why his brand really broke through so well. So if you could do something like that, similar, make your own story and really start something that matters within jewelry, you don't have to, but for example, if you're doing something with fair trade, if you're doing something with other countries and, and just kind of having a good story behind it, Ultimately, that's going to help your brand find major success down the road. But like I said, you don't have to do this. There's many ways, there's really infinite ways to have your own competitive advantage. But moving on, you wanna know why people should buy from you. Of course, there's so much competition out there. Why, and this kind of goes a little bit with the competitive advantage and the moat, but why would they buy from you? You have two options. You can either be the cheapest or you can be the best. So are you gonna sell high end or low end? And in general, I would recommend anybody starting a business you're, although it's tempting to say, I'm just gonna sell, I'm gonna sell cheaper, I'm gonna sell what they like, but I'm gonna sell it a little cheaper. It's really hard to do that. And I would say most people are better off selling the high end. And the reason for this is because you have something called economies of scale. So if you're trying to sell the cheapest thing possible, but you're doing it yourself, you're competing with massive machines, massive infrastructure, and people's time diluted across millions and millions of products that essentially makes it impossible for you to compete with them. So how can you possibly make uh, jewelry for cheaper than a machine that can make 10,000 per hour, right? So you can see how that becomes kind of an uphill battle there. And then if you look at the high end, this is something that we've really liked to see with a lot of other big brands that you probably recognize like Tesla, Louis Vuitton, brands like that that essentially start off with a really high end, the, the best of the best, and it's going to take more time, it's going to take more effort to make it in the first place, and it might take a little while to find your first couple sales, but you're going to have significantly better profits. So if you look at Tesla, for example, Tesla started off by taking the Lotus Elite, a gas car, and they essentially took the frame of that, the chassis, and they put electric motors in there, a battery, and made an electric car out of that. It was a high-end car, so it became a high-end electric car. And then they moved on to the Tesla Roadster, which again, was a high-end car. And as they started getting more volume, getting more profit, getting more money, they were able to kind of work their way down and make cheaper and cheaper cars until they were getting to a broader market but again, you wanna start off with something a little bit more niche. Same thing with Louis Vuitton, starting off with the basically unattainable, unobtainable bags and, and whatever else they're selling from Louis Vuitton that is really, really expensive. And it gives them a really nice high image of quality. And then over time, they can start selling cheaper and cheaper things so other people can get that. And I think that's a really good business model to follow whenever you're starting anything new that is a product, and especially with something like jewelry. Making something that is more expensive and you make fewer of them and it has a strong story behind it, has a lot of meaning and it's a little bit more rare, I think in general is going to find more success for you. So tying in with that, you wanna know who your target market actually is. If you're doing something like investment grade jewelry, it's obviously going to be very, very different from something that is a, a horoscope necklace, right? Where one of them would care more about the meaning behind it, they don't really care about the materials, and the other really just wants to retain value in the materials. So you wanna make sure that you're not going too broad. Much like I was saying with the Tesla or Louis Vuitton, you start off with a very narrow market, exactly one thing, and over time, maybe in 10 years, maybe in 20 years, as you grow, you can start tackling a larger market, but you really wanna make sure you're getting a very, very niche thing, something that has a strong story behind it, and that's essentially going to be how you choose the overall big picture of your brand. That brings us into number two on this list, and this is the name and the legal aspect of your business. Now, this you can kind of bang out within a couple of days or a week if you do it right, and essentially what you're doing here is you're making a business, you're making a business name, and you're setting up some of the background stuff. Now, you might ask, why would I want to start a business instead of just selling it under my own name, which is a fair question. It's a lot easier to just go and start selling things under your own name, but there are a lot of legal and financial benefits to having it set up through a business. But before we get to the business, let's rewind a little bit to the name of your business. So when you're brainstorming a name for your business, you have a couple options on how you can really set this up. Now, of course, you've got infinite options for what the name is, but essentially there's really four main ways you can make a, a business name. So you can have essentially a plan words, you can have adjacent topics, you can have a made up word, or you can kind of have misspellings. And all four of those are going to be great ways to find something that you are able to trademark without having to step on anyone else's toes or deal with any kind of legal, anything hairy there. But of course, whenever you're coming up with a name, we recommend, and we have a link below, the US Trademark Search website. Now this is going to make sure that whatever name you come up with is sufficiently different from other trademarks out there. So if I come up with a, a, like a handbag thing and I wanna call it Louis Vuitton, I'll look it up and realize 
that business already exists. And you can't have anything even similar to that. So you can't be like Louis with like two eyes in it, Vuitton. Like it's gonna be obvious that you have to be sufficiently different to avoid lawsuits. But the reason I was saying misspellings, adjacent topics, uh, a plan words or a made up word are really going to be four great ways to make a business is because if you're selling books and you just call yourself the book company, it's gonna be a lot harder to get that trademark. One, because there's probably a lot of really similar names to that. And two, because it's really hard to get trademarks for very generic terms. Like the book company, it's gonna be hard to do. Not saying it's impossible, but it's a lot easier if you find a play on words, especially for something like jewelry. And you either, if you're doing like horoscopes, maybe you're like the astrology something, right? You wanna kind of pick adjacent things. Maybe you are the name, like named after some constellation or something related to your brand. You can misspell it. You can somehow make things a little bit different. And out of these four, I would say my favorite is the made up word. Nate and I have spent hours and hours for different businesses we had looking through old like Latin dictionaries, uh, obsolete word dictionaries, just random character generators, finding words that did not exist that were easy to pronounce. But that way you don't have any meaning, meaning you have nothing to compete against and it's a totally made up word that's completely yours and you can just own that word. That way you have better search engine optimization. If somebody types that in, they only find you. There's no competition at all. And essentially it's going to be a wide open canvas, a blank canvas, you can do whatever you want. But getting back to that other question we had about setting up a business versus doing it as yourself. So doing it on your own, depending on where you're located, might by default be categorized as a sole proprietorship, Sometimes you need paperwork for that, but, but really what's more popular instead is a limited liability company. Now, of course, this is not legal advice. I can't tell you what to do. Always consult a, a legal advisor before doing this stuff, but a very popular way to set up a business is a limited liability company for several main reasons. But the first one is that it's a limited liability company, meaning the first two words, you're limiting your liability. So if you sold some jewelry, say it was a necklace, and for some reason, somebody bought the necklace and went into some kind of allergic reaction to some material in there, and they tried to sue you. Well, if you were a sole proprietor, if you were just selling it as yourself, they could take your stuff, they can take your bank account, they can take your house, depending on where you're living, they can, take a, they can take everything from you and you can end up basically living on the streets. Whereas if you have a limited liability company and if you run it correctly, meaning you don't trade too much between yourself and the company, like you keep it as a separate entity, then somebody's going to sue your company and not sue you. So in the worst case there, you would lose the company, but you would still keep your house and your clothes and all of your stuff, you get to keep that. But the company, would go out of business. So that's a way of isolating yourself from your company. It, it definitely provides a lot of security and it's why a lot of people like to do that. But additionally, you have some other benefits with running a company as well. One of them, of course, is that it gives you a lot of opportunities to open things like a business credit card. So you have a line of credit there, different business banks to kind of separate your money and your business's money, which makes it easier to track things. And of course, uh, tying in with purchasing and tracking things, also, doing your taxes are going to be a lot easier if you're running it through a business where you can track how much you spent on different supplies and deduct that from your revenue so you're only taxed on your profit rather than being taxed on everything. But of course, look into your local tax laws. It could be different wherever you're located. But that goes to the next step here, which is actually to buy your domain. Once you decide on setting up the business, you can go and file that paperwork. Once you choose the name, you wanna move on to having your own website. And so buying the domain is going to be a really big part of this where you want to essentially try to find the simplest domain possible. So if you chose a name that's maybe eight letters long, you could say that.com would be the ideal domain. So people can find it. It's easy to rank in Google with that. And in general, it's going to be a lot more memorable for people. Now, the way you can set up a website, there's so many different places out there, but the one that we recommend is actually the sponsor of today's video, which is BigCommerce. Now, BigCommerce is a great way to build your online store. I'll actually show you how to do that right now. They have many different ways to not only set up your store, but also manage your store. They do a lot of the backend work for you from tracking inventory. So if you order a hundred items of something, you can just tell it, hey, I have a hundred. And every time you have an order, they'll keep track of that and tell you when you have low stock. So you don't have to go and check your inventory all the time. Additionally, they integrate with a ton of different services out there from email marketing services to ad services. And they really make it easy to make your website, manage your website, manage your products and manage your customers as well. Giving you contact information, shipping information, everything you need for your customers all in one dashboard. So that's why we like to use BigCommerce, but let's actually, I wanna show you guys, I have a full tutorial on all the details 
details to this. It's like an hour or two long, but I'll give you a quick rundown of how to use BigCommerce and how to set up a jewelry store using BigCommerce. And then after that, we'll dive into some of the other more nuanced details to find more success with regards to marketing and things like that. But let's head over to my laptop right now and set up that BigCommerce store. Okay, so we can start off by going to a new tab on our browser and typing in centralmedia.com slash BigCommerce, or you can click the link in the top of the description. It'll bring you over to centralmedia.com slash BigCommerce. This will give you a free trial with BigCommerce gives you a great way to start with your website and then eventually upgrade whenever you're ready. And here it's going to ask you your first name, last name, phone number, email. And it's going to ask you some questions on the bottom about have you started selling anything and like what your business size is. You can answer that, but honestly, it's not going to make a huge difference further on down the road. You'll end up going to the same place no matter what. Then it's going to say your store is being created. They'll have a couple extra questions about do you have an existing website? Uh, yes or no. What, what are you going to be selling? And this is really going to help you find the right theme. So try to find the closest closest thing possible. Obviously, we're going to look for jewelry right here. But other than that, it, it's really not going to be essential that you find the perfect thing because any theme can be customized however you want. Then we'll say finish and it's going to eventually bring us over here to the dashboard. Now, BigCommerce has a nice little thing that says start accepting orders and they kind of walk you through the basics. You can go and add your products, you can set up uh, how to ship, you can set up payments and then set up your tax rates as well. And all of these are really going to make it a lot easier for you just walking through this one at a time. Obviously adding products being your first one, you need to figure out what your products are and actually take some photos of your products, whether they are from drop shipping or whether they're white labeled or if you're just making them in-house on your own, these are all gonna be things that you want to have pictures available so you can set up these products. But of course, like I said, I have a full tutorial. You can dive into that there and I'll show you every single step you need to know about how to set up all the little settings on here. But basically the first thing you want to do is go over to the left, click on products, you can view them. And by default, they're giving us a lot of products just in this template, this fake website that they're, that they're starting us off with. And so we can go and delete all of these. We don't need any of these. These uh, Obviously we're not selling these. So we can go and delete all of them first. And then we can click on add a new product. And from here, this is just going to be a basic physical product. And you can see on the left side, we have a lot of different things. They're all going to be on the same page if you scroll up and down. But essentially we can say, is it visible on the storefront? The answer is probably going to be yes for all of our products, unless you're selling something privately to somebody else and, and you don't want to show that here, but whatever it is, you can have product name. Uh, and from this example, this is actually from a previous website I made where I was selling, for example, a bag of coffee. And so you can have the product name, you can have a stock keeping unit or, or SKU for short. You want to make sure you have that so you can track your inventory. The product type, this is obviously a physical product and you can choose a default price for this as well. The default price is either going to be charged or if you have a sale price, you can have uh, essentially, it'll be crossed out and show a different price. You can choose the brand. So if you have some kind of brand, if it's retail, that's where you'd add that. And then of course you have your weight. And then below that, we can add our description. Now in the description, you can see that there are quite a few different editing tools here. So you can have bold, underline, italic. You can add links within there. You can change the font. You can change, add numbered lists, bulleted lists. You have a lot of options. And I recommend you really flesh this out as much as possible to tell the full story about the products you're selling, about the jewelry you're actually selling. And so this is really going to be a great place for this. But you don't wanna really embed, you can embed pictures in here and videos, but really you'd wanna have that below in the images and videos section of your website, of course, because when you're looking at a product, you wanna have a slideshow of images, not so much have images down in the description. It feels like that's kind of a strange place for it. But you know, sometimes people like to experiment with a little bit of both. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about images in just a minute, but you're gonna add whatever images you have here. And then down here, product identifiers are going to just be really if you're retail, now, remember I said there are different ways to sell jewelry. One of them is retail. If you find them uh, from something like Alibaba or something that is maybe a bit more of a name brand, you can add things right here. You can have global trade item number, things like that. And of course, down here is the pricing. As I, rec as I said before, you've got the default price and you can have some tax information as well. And uh, we can also track the inventory. This is something if you don't just have one of each tracking inventory would be a really useful thing. Below that we have variations, so you can add a variant and this could be anything that is any kind of different version of, of your product. So it could be like the color of it, it could be the size of it, whatever it might be, you can choose how this is gonna be set up. And this is something I really like about BigCommerce is that they have different ways to have variants. So right here we can have radio buttons where they can select which one it is. So in the coffee example I was using earlier, it could be finely ground, it could be coarse ground, it could be just whole beans, whatever it is. 
and you can choose for each variant a different picture. So if you're talking about jewelry, maybe you have a silver version and a gold version, and you can have different pictures and different prices for both of those, which I think, again, is really useful. You can do that. Customizations would be something a little bit different yet. So this could be like a text box, a checkbox, a file. So if you're having like an engraving on a ring, for example, you could have that right here. Or if you have a monogram on a necklace or something like that, you can add that right here. So that's something that essentially is going to be a very powerful tool if you're making more custom jewelry. And then lower down on the page, we have search engine optimization, which is going to essentially allow you to be found on Google. When somebody searches for something on Google and they find your product, how is this going to be listed on Google? You have a title, you have a URL, and you have a meta description. So the title is going to be essentially the dark, like the blue text that's highlighted on Google. And then below that, you'll have your meta description and the URL slug is going to be whatever your website is, .com slash that. And usually I just make that whatever the name of the product is. And that way when somebody looks it up, it's easier for them to copy and share the link. It's also easier for Google to identify it all around just cleaner for the website as a whole. Now, before we can actually list and sell this, I said there are 15 days on our free trial, but we want to go and select a plan. I want to talk about the different plans you have with Big Commerce, And of course, right here, you can see that there are different plans depending on your business size. They vary a lot from $30 a month all, all, all the way up to $300 a month. And so, of course, this is going to be a really big difference in, in how big your store is. So as you start to sell a lot more, it's definitely going to be more appealing to have the $80 or $300 a month plans. But when you're getting started out, I think most people people would probably be best off with the first free month and then $29.95 per month. It gives you really what you need. And at the same time, it doesn't break your bank when you get just getting started out. But there are benefits you'll eventually see with the bigger ones out there. But of, of course, first of all, you see there are no additional transaction fees. But with the more expensive ones, you'll be able to sell a little bit more in sales per year. You'll be able to have things like a custom SSL, a lot more advanced things and more control over your website. But in the beginning, you still have a full featured online store. Like I said, no transaction, no additional transaction fees. You've got all the different sales channels. You've got coupons, discounts, gift cards. You have everything you really need to get started with the standard version, which is why I recommend doing that. So we'll go on down here and select the standard version for this, or actually go back up and click select standard plan. But like I said, you get the first month for free. And then after that, you'll be billed for that monthly cost. And that should funnel you over to this page right here, which is going to offer you to get a domain. Now you can get a domain from some other source. There are many other sources out there. Uh, you can go to GoDaddy or Namecheap or Google Domains. But in general, I usually just do it directly through Big Commerce or really whatever website builder I'm using because I find it to be the easiest way to do it. It's so easy to integrate. You don't have to spend a lot of your time looking for DNS uh, pointers and, and dealing with all of that. It gets, it gets confusing, especially for beginner. And so rather than going down that rabbit hole, you really don't spend any extra money. Like it, it might be instead of 12, it might be like $13 per year if you go and buy it directly through something like Big Commerce. But that's why I would recommend doing that. And they walk you right through that. They tell you the availability. They'll tell you what the price is per year. You can purchase that and then it'll just put you right back to the dashboard and it's already integrated. It's already ready to go. And your website is now live under that new name. Now I mentioned that I have a full tutorial on how to use Big Commerce, and this is going to go through all the different details, setting up coupons, setting up tax information, everything you need to know. So I'm not gonna dive too deep into that in this video, but the next thing I wanna mention is that if you go over to Storefront on Big Commerce, you click on that, it's going to take you into this and you can choose a different theme, a different logo, and really customize your website a little bit more. So if you go and customize the theme, you can not only move things around on your site and add different pictures and, and really change the text on there and make it your own website, but really first, I'd recommend choosing a different theme. There are different free and premium e-commerce templates you can choose from. And so BigCommerce has a pretty big selection, as you can see here. You can go and find something. Don't worry too much about the images. You can change them. But in general, you want to find something that has a similar text and, and kind of spatial arrangement that is going to resonate with your jewelry brand. And so go through these and see which one makes the most sense for you. Select it, and then you can start customizing. Again, I recommend using the link in the description to go over to that full tutorial once you're at this step. But one other thing I want to mention with Big Commerce is a really cool feature called Multi Storefront. And essentially, this is another reason we like to get started with Big Commerce because if you start off with just one brand, it's very easy to scale not only to different markets. So if you have one jewelry brand, you want to make a slightly different jewelry store that's going to target a different market and you want to have them as separate stores, you can do that. 
or you can also go, and as you can see right here, you can have unique brands, you can have different segments launching in different regions, maybe you have a different version that's going to have a different currency, different prices in another part of the world, maybe you have different shipping for that, whatever it might be, multi-storefront is a really powerful tool, as you can see here, that essentially multiplies your brand, not just from where you are, but into different markets, different target markets around the world, around different demographics, around different interests. So again, we'll have a link to more information about multi-storefront in the description below. And that brings us to the next segment of your jewelry brand journey. Now, this is going to be sourcing your products. Depending on how you're trying to sell these, your products are going to come from different sources. And there's really four main ways to do this. You can do this as retail, which is directly buying something, holding the inventory, and then selling it. This is going to sometimes have better margins than the next two, but is definitely a lot more work and a lot more risk by buying the inventory, which is why some people opt for the second one, which is drop shipping, which essentially means you have a deal with the manufacturer. When somebody orders from you, you tell them, they ship it. That way you don't have any overhead. You didn't buy the inventory. You're not stuck with the inventory. And if the product doesn't sell well, you don't lose any money because you didn't buy that inventory. So that's a big advantage. But the downside here is that sometimes it is going to take longer to ship versus if you had that inventory and opted for the first option. So it's a trade off and you can really manage, you can decide for yourself which one's going to be better. Or the third one is going to be branded drop shipping, also known as white labeling, which doesn't work as much with a lot of jewelry, but for some situations it might. For example, if you're doing bracelets or necklaces that you want to have engraved, or if you want to have any kind of uh, printing on them, you can do something that you, you have a deal with the manufacturer and they will add that for you and ship it out. That way you don't need the machinery to print or to engrave or anything like that. Or really the fourth option, which I think is probably going to be the best for the most people out there, is actually in-house manufacturing. That is making your own jewelry. This is going to ensure that you get better quality, that you have a more artistic touch on it. You're able to have a little bit more control over what things are and make exactly what your brand is really supposed to embody. Now, if you think back and remember to the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I knew somebody that made $200,000 per year with her jewelry brand. Now, essentially, she makes it all herself. She bought a little saw, she bought a little drill press and started off on her own, which is a lot more hands-on. You needed maybe a garage or a little bit of space for this, but eventually, as you scale, you can start buying some bigger equipment, some more uh, automated equipment and make it a lot easier if you really scale up. But in the beginning, it is pretty affordable to go and spend maybe $80 on a drill press, maybe, you know, buy some cheaper equipment and just get things started with, with just that rather than, than working with other brands or Alibaba or something like that. Because as I said, if you're doing drop shipping, retail, branded drop shipping, whatever it is, Alibaba is a very popular place to buy these. And that's what a lot of people choose because it is very affordable. It's a lot cheaper and you can sell them for higher prices and get a pretty fat margin there. But with that, you will have some hurdles. Of course, language barriers, depending on who the supplier is, a lot of them are international and they might not speak English. So that could be a hurdle there. You could have shipping problems as well, like I said, or you could have other essentially geographic problems, such as if one country goes into a lockdown for some kind of health pandemic reason, like what's going on right now, uh, then maybe you have some supply chain issues that you could be facing. But regardless, I think in any situation, it's usually better to source everything and, and make it yourself in-house, like I said, and you could either sell it on your store, like I said, with, with big commerce, or if you don't wanna go through the trouble of making a store, you can make everything yourself and sell it on eBay or Etsy or or in a, in a market in person. You get to sell things physically and never have to list them online if that's the style you're looking for. Now, when you're actually making the jewelry, you might say, I maybe know how to make some jewelry, but not really well. Well, just like how you're learning to make a jewelry brand right now, you can also learn how to actually make jewelry on YouTube. There's a fantastic platform that, that has a lot of really intelligent people making all styles of different jewelry and tying in with this, it's also a big opportunity for marketing for you. Once you start making your own jewelry, you can film this, you can make videos about it, and you can really go with a, a bunch of different routes here where if you make a channel, whether it's on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram or, or any, anywhere like that, and you just make videos about yourself making the jewelry, first of all, it is free marketing for you. You're, you're growing your brand. You're having organic free marketing that spreads the word about your brand and, and, and increases your customer base. But also, it can be an additional source of, of uh, connections and income and whatever it might be. And you can choose a, really what style you're looking for. Some people might go for more of a laid back, like play some music to show you as like a time lapse making the jewelry. Maybe it's a, a lot more like vocal and you're talking about what you're doing step by step as a tutorial. There's different ways. You can be as creative as you want, but I think that's a really cool way to actually make a little bit more out of your jewelry brand rather than just selling it having that brand, having that, that content associated with it, I think is really powerful. 
Now, that brings us to the next step, and this is determining pricing. Now, a lot of people struggle with this because they sell for too low of a price. Now, unfortunately, I see this all too often. People find something for $5, they wanna sell it for six, but they don't factor in their marketing costs, their overhead costs, their insurance, their business, their business operational costs, and they end up not having positive profit margins. So in general, you wanna factor everything in, and for jewelry, you could aim for anywhere from 10 to 40% margins, depending on where you're selling it and how you're selling it. But you wanna make sure that you're definitely getting some positive margins. You wanna make sure that you're getting some cash flow. But of course, this is going to be dependent, like I said, on your marketing, which is why the next thing we wanna talk about is your marketing strategy. This is the next step, and this is really a big one. This is one that I love to talk about. Obviously, this is a channel that we talk a lot about about different marketing strategies. So here we have two different sectors, two different routes you can go. You can go with free traffic, and I'll talk about that in a second, or you can go with paid traffic. Now, it's very tempting at first to say, free traffic maybe takes too long, which it doesn't necessarily have to, but they say maybe it takes too long and you just wanna jump right into paid traffic. You wanna get customers today. And this is what I would really avoid doing when you're starting. It's really tempting to go and get some paid ads, but it definitely takes a lot of capital up front. It takes a lot of learning. And this is something that can end up being a little bit too costly for you. I see a lot of people dump all their money in at once and they don't do any of the A to B testing. They don't do any of the research and they just lose their money. They spend maybe $40, they get one customer. That's not profitable at all. So that's not the best way to do that. Of course, if you're going to do paid ads, you wanna do a lot of split testing, A to B testing, try different ads, try different platforms, try different wording, literally every little detail in, including the font, the period at the end, whatever it might be, this all makes a massive difference and you wanna test things one at a time with very, very low amounts for each until you find the perfect ad and then you dial up your ad spend and really start raking in cash. But that's why when you're getting started out, I don't recommend paid ads as your primary source of traffic. Instead, if you wanna have a paid route, you can either do social media marketing or influencers. Influencer marketing, I think, is really one of the most powerful and still very undervalued markets out there, where if you're a very small jewelry brand, and I think this is a great example, actually right back here, I know I keep grabbing things behind me, but this right here was from an artist, and here actually I'm just giving them another organic plug here, but this was an artist that sent this to me and said, hey Mike, I made this, I, I want you to, you know, I want you to have this and maybe share it in your videos or something. And so I said, you know what, I really like this, I'm happy to support a small artist, I would love to put this behind me in my videos. I have a, I have a tech review channel, this is a disassembled iPhone 4S, so I thought that's a really cool thing to put there. So in return, I put a link to them in the description, people see it, they ask about it. It's a really cool way that they get some free organic marketing just by sending me that. So technically it's not free, they paid for shipping, but it's a great way for them to get some exposure. And similarly, if you're selling jewelry, maybe you could go and have influencers wear your jewelry and add a link to you in, your, in their description. Maybe you could pay them a little bit extra and have them give you a shout out in their videos or maybe pay an Instagram influencer to make a post and again, put a link to you in their, in their, in their bio or whatever it might be. And so that's a way to go about a paid action here. But alternatively, you can also do this in a free way. I mentioned earlier that you can make an Instagram account or YouTube or TikTok. YouTube and TikTok are probably going to be a little bit more uh, successful in my opinion right now. And these could be just you making your, your, essentially making your jewelry. Or if you're doing, like I said, if you're starting something that matters and maybe you donate something every time someone buys something, you can make videos about you doing good. And as long as they're viral style videos, if you really know what you're doing and figure it out and start making videos that go viral, people are going to love your story. They're gonna wanna support your story. And this is like what you saw, you know, the bracelets that support the ocean cleanup, people were buying them and that's supporting that. Now that's a little bit different because it is kind of a nonprofit, but you can essentially have a good story and also get a lot of marketing and do a lot of good in the world while going viral on the internet and having a totally free organic marketing strategy. Now that's big picture. You don't necessarily have to do the Blake Mykoski style for your business, as I keep saying, but starting a YouTube channel at the very least to show how you're making it or talk about what you're doing can add a lot of character and add a lot of depth to your brand that can make people wanna buy more stuff, buy things, buy things from you and give them as gifts to other people and really feel like they're a part of your community. And that brings us into the final topic on your journey here. And this is actually taking photos of your products and, and different miscellaneous things you need to know about your brand. So I said earlier, when you're making your website, you wanna have photos. And this is something that I see all too often. People are, they're so close. They make a great product. They make a great book, whatever it might be. And they just miss with the photos. They don't have good photos of their products or they only have one photo of their product. So when taking photos of your products, there's really three main setups that I would recommend that you could choose between. The first one, the easiest is just having a model, whether it's you or somebody else wearing your jewelry. 
You can take pictures of it on an actual person so you can see that. And you wanna make sure you're doing this in good lighting. Don't do it in your house near a wall. You wanna do it either near a window or maybe outside in a shady spot somewhere it doesn't have hard shadows. Just look up a quick photography video on how to take photos of different products that people are wearing and you'll quickly see how to do this. It's, it's really not that hard and you can use your phone. You don't have to buy an expensive camera, but if you wanna maybe borrow someone else's camera, that could help a lot as well. The second setup, this one is going to be, uh, if you essentially have like a little mannequin thing, if you have like, for example, necklaces, you could buy like one of those little mannequins that a necklace sits on, like you could picture it maybe in the mall. And you could take this little mannequin, buy it on Amazon, for example, and you could just set it up in a nice little place that looks aesthetic, whether it's on a table with some flowers behind it, something like that, that again, it has good even lighting. It's not a grainy dark photo and something like that could be a good setup. Or the third one, which is the most consistent and requires the least effort, would require you to spend a little bit more money and you can buy like these little photo boxes, a little photo booth. It's about one foot by one foot, a little tiny cube and it's all white in there. And essentially you can just place your product in there. You have a little lighting on there. So it's nice, even lighting and you can take photos that all look very, very consistent and really focus in on the jewelry you're actually selling. So again, I'll link to these in the description below, but if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Again, I'm Michael Bryan from Santral Media. I wish you the best of luck on your jewelry brand. I really am excited to see what kind of stuff you guys make, what you're selling, and I wish you the best success out there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.